I'm here with Leslie Mean, who are a former TV anchor, and you're the founder of an online community known as Her View from a Home, and you're coming out with a new book. So can you kind of tell us how you got started into that? Oh, gosh. It's a, I, it's a long story, uh, but the, the short the short version is um, I have a TV background. I've always been a storyteller ever since I was a little girl. And I left TV in 2010. And I actually started working for our local chamber of commerce, which was this business side. At the business world, when I was in the chamber, I really missed that storytelling piece of TV. And that's when we created her view from home. I wanted, it originally started as, um, it was going to be like the local talk show that we started. We started a talk show at our TV station where we really interviewed people um, in the Nebraska area. And so I wanted to do that online. It wasn't just Nebraska stories. It's now stories for women across the globe. Um, and we focus on motherhood and marriage and relationships grief and faith. So that is like the very shortened version of, of what her view from home is. So when did you say you started the launch of the website, her view from a home 2012. So oh, it's wow. 10 years old now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it has changed dramatically. What was it like when you first started parenting? Like what advice do you have for newer mothers? Biggest piece for me with raising my kids and starting my business. I mean, it, for any mom, whether you work outside of the home or inside of the home, for me, it was support. Support has been the biggest piece uh, for me in everything I do. Uh, my husband is very supportive. My my friends and family are very supportive, but a lot of, a lot of writers in our community who are also mothers too, they'll say that, you know, they're struggling with something. And I always tell them, they need to find at least one person, one person who can be there for them, whoever that person is, who can be a sounding board for them, who can be there to be truthful and who will just listen to you. It does. It takes a village. What would you say? I'm sure you get this question a lot, but how do you balance your work life? You have your business is thriving and you have three amazing children. How do you do both. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody thinks that they are all put together, um, especially social media does that a lot, right? Makes you feel like everyone's put together. It is <laughs> not true. Uh, for me, something is always going to fall behind. Obviously my family will always come first. And so what I've had to learn through my 13 and a half years of parenting is it's okay to let some of those things go. The most important things in your life, that's what you need to balance and make a priority and be okay if there's dishes in the sink and the toilets haven't been cleaned or the laundry is overflowing. You know, those things just don't, those don't matter. And I think when you realize that, then that's kind of how the balance works out a little bit. Then your new book, So God Made a Mother, was there a specific... Yes. Um, I guess moment in your life where you're like, I need to write this book. Yep. So the website is made up of contributors from across the globe and they, they send in content on those topics that I mentioned earlier on faith, family, grief, relationships, motherhood, really the real vulnerable, raw, beautiful pieces of motherhood is on her view from home. And so actually one of the pieces that went nuts, went viral hundreds of thousands of views a few years ago was a piece called uh, God Gave Me Sons. And it was just a, a mom talking about her boys. And then suddenly we had a God gave me mother, or God made me a mother, or so God gave me girls, or it, all those articles went just nuts on her view from home because everybody could relate to it. And then actually during COVID, I'm in the tub, you know, where all the best <laughs> ideas come. But, oh my gosh, that would be such a good title for the book. And so the book is actually made up of pieces from all of the Herbie from Home contributors, brand new content. And it, and I will lead the reader through. And um, it's, it's really about the raw, beautiful, vulnerable moments of motherhood. And I just, it's going to be, it's going to be so good. Oh, do you have like a specific moment of motherhood that was just so 
Well, I'm sure you do. Do you have one you want to share today? You know, I find myself emotional about motherhood all the time. It's this bittersweet journey of watching them grow up and you want them to grow up, obviously, you know, that's, it's so cool to, to watch them become who they're going to be. And yet you realize as they get older, that means they're going to leave you. And, you know, there's that popular quote going around that it's been around forever that says, you know, you know, you've done your job right when they can leave you. Right. And, and that's the ultimate goal of motherhood, but it's, it's this bittersweet journey of, of letting them go. To newly wedded couples that are kind of struggling, especially with everything going on with this pandemic, a lot of husbands are losing their jobs and there's, and same with women too. How would you, when it comes to financial pressures, what, what would you say you could piece of advice you could give to them? Yeah, that's a hard one. You know, for me, I think the biggest thing for our marriage and my husband and I have been married for 17 years, you know, even the early years with Herbie from home, it wasn't making any money and he really was supporting us so much. And I was working full time too. And, and at that time, and really I'll say a lot now, he marriage is, is people think it's a 50, 50, thing, but it's really not. Sometimes one partner is giving 90 and the other one can only give 10 and vice versa. And, um, you know, I think that's important to remember when you're going into any relationship that it depends on the season of, of how much you can handle. Right. And that's why your partner is there to pick you up and be like, Hey, I got this. And then a few months down the road, you might have to do the same thing for your partner. So that is a big, a big piece, um, in my marriage is that it's not always 50, 50. And as long as you remember that balance and always put, always try to put your partner first, um, I think that is, that can go a long way in a relationship. It's what works for us. Yeah. It's it's all about being selfless because in the end, you know, right. And those are always the most, some of the most popular pieces on Herbie from home on our Facebook page is when you talk about those little things in marriage too. like my husband will fill the coffee maker in the morning with water. And then that means I don't have to do it. And those little moments make such a difference that I wouldn't have known 17 years ago, but now I'm like, oh, he filled the, he filled the coffee pot for me. And it, it really does. It's those little things in marriage that can go a long way. Mm-hmm. So I did have a few questions as far as like it comes to with spouses from newly married women. And they asked they're in the fighting stages and you did talk about kind of like, hey, like just be selfless. What would you say is the best way to communicate when you just, you cannot talk to one another. Yes. Oh, okay. My biggest piece of advice there is as hard, as hard as it is, don't, um, don't bad mouth your spouse. I know that's hard, but you wouldn't want your spouse to do that to you. And so I, I think you have to be open and honest communication right away but for me. And, and this is really interesting because my husband and I have had this issue. He likes to He'll say, bury it and then bury the shovel. He does not want to talk about things. He does not. And I make him. And he told me not long ago, he's like, Les, I didn't know that about you. And now I I know that we are not going to be able to move on until we talk it out. Mm -hmm. And I think we've just kind of had to figure out that balance a little bit um, in our marriage. But I, I always say, find a way to talk about it. And if you two can't talk about it, seek help to be able to do that. Um, But yeah, I would not. I would not go out and talk to other people about it. That's not going to solve. Interesting. Because that's what a lot of us would tend to do sometimes. Because we're just like, and especially too, when it comes like, oh, it takes a village. Like you need your close right. friends to kind of right. help. But you're so right about that. You just got to kind of mm-hmm. just take a step back and just, okay. And be sure right. to just not run your mouth. Which, yep. is- which is so hard in anything, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. So your book is coming out in the fall. For pre-sale in the fall. And then it will officially be um, out in April of 2023. So you can pre-order it this fall. And then um, by Mother's Day, you'll be able to have it early April of, mm-hmm. of next year. But thank you, Leslie, for coming on and kind of giving us a few tips. I'm so excited for the book. Thank and you. Yeah, no problem. Well, you have a great day.